hello to parents, students, and anyone else interested in what's happening in Sunway International School Joe My name is David Hefting, and I'm the English IB uh, Diploma English teacher here. And we've got a great program. It's focused on developing holistic language abilities of students. And that means not just reading and writing, but listening and speaking. Not just reading old, dead European white guys, but texts and authors from all around the world and all across history. The curriculum includes speaking up and leading discussions and debates, listening in order to learn and interact, and writing in multiple genres, text formats, and even types of English. We don't just study old books, although we love to do that too. We look at texts that have impacted and influenced our modern culture. We look at what texts and ideas have formed the foundations of what we believe, and we study how we can effectively evaluate the arguments they're making. Nobody's saying this work is easy, but it's important. And like any type of difficulty that results in growth, it can even be pretty fun. So, what does this look like in practice? I'll give an example of mini lesson for one tweet to show what it can look like. So, there's this tweet by Drake, and he says, we always ignore the ones who adore us and adore the ones who ignore us. So it sounds kind of cool, it rhymes, he's a rapper, it makes sense. But one of the things that made this tweet so popular, it was the second most retweeted tweet in 2010, was an influence from ancient Greeks. So let's jump into history and see how modern language was influenced by people 2300 years ago. So ancient Greeks created this art called rhetoric which means the art of oration, or speaking well. They figured out a whole range of methods of putting words together in a way that would sound more pleasing to the ear, or be more persuasive or memorable. People who have studied rhetoric intensively have gone down in history as world changers. People like Abraham Lincoln, Winston Churchill, Barack Obama, Shakespeare, <clears throat> etc. In Greece, these methods were so effective that it became the natural place for democracy to form, because each person's voice mattered, and being persuasive could be a matter of life and death. In their law courts, you rarely had lawyers. You had to represent yourself and persuade others of your innocence. How well you communicated was everything. And so they developed this um, to an incredible way. But how did these ideas spread so far across the world? That was 2,300 years ago. Here we are today. One person really helped. So about 2,300 years ago, a young man named Alexander was born in Greek Macedonia. Since his father Philip was a king, he was able to be personally tutored by Aristotle, one of the greatest thinkers of all time. This young man ended up conquering most of the known world by the time he was 33 years old. Not only did he spread military dominance through his hoplite soldiers, he also spread Greek culture in a process called Hellenism or Hellenization. Soon communities all the way from Egypt to India were speaking Greek and learning many of the ideas about gods and the worldview and philosophy that guided Greek speech. So the Romans conquered the Greeks, but they loved the Greek ideas. They took over, they changed the Greek gods into Roman gods, and they took these ideas about rhetoric and philosophy and carried them on. And then they conquered much of Europe and uh, East as well. And their ideas continued. For hundreds of years, grammar schools was almost entirely about the art of rhetoric. Shakespeare would have spent 10 to 12 hours a day practicing these tools, as with the translators of the King James Bible. Eventually, these tools and ideas spread to the new world. And that brings us to the present, when Canadian rapper Drake put out that tweet. Whenever, whether he was fully aware of it or not, he was using the Greek rhetorical device called chiasmus. It comes from the Greek letter chi, chi, which looks like a modern X. It's basically when you take several elements and then flip them, the order to the opposite, just like an X. So again, we always ignore the ones who adore us and adore the ones who ignore us. The flip surprises us. We have to slow down to catch what they're saying. And that time lets us play around with the riddle until we can capture the wisdom of it. Another famous chiasmus is from JFK when talking about the Vietnam War. He said, ask not what your country can do for you, what you can do for your country. Drake adds rhyme, which makes it sound more pleasing to the air, and make people actually believe it's more likely to be true. For example, in the O.J. Simpson case, his lawyers kept saying, if the glove does not fit, you must acquit. And it ended up working. We believe it's true because it rhymes. It sounds more natural and more true. So just a couple simple tools Drake used, and it turned one sentence into something interesting, puzzling, and memorable that echoed around the world. 
His examples show that these tools still work in modern times, and that ancient Greek ideas can influence the way we speak and communicate with others, and that can be a powerful thing. Thank you. 